Chapter 7. I debrief my wife. My wife was awake when I got home. Where? she asked, sitting up in bed. No luck, I said. We couldn't find him. Did you talk to anyone who knows him? Your dad spoke to an old woman who lives down the hall from him. She thought he might have moved out. She hadn't seen him in weeks. Did you speak to the landlady? Yes, she confirmed he was gone. She said he moved to Blossom Street, but we didn't see his name listed anywhere on any mailboxes. Well, it wouldn't have been any fun if you had found him right away. Now, at least you'll have an adventure. I'm too busy for an adventure. Thank you for bringing Dad along. Did he enjoy himself? I saw him smile once or twice. Was he helpful? He was. I know you cautioned him not to ask questions, but he was curious when Lars overpaid for information. What did he say? He might have been joking, but he asked if Lars and I were intending to kill Duxbury. What did you say? Lars told him the truth about us wanting to help him. The funny thing is, I felt like your father would have gone along with us, even if we were going to kill Duxbury. I seriously doubt that, Loris. Does your father think I kill people? Loris, if he thought you were a murderer, he'd never come around here as often as he does. I guess I'm done as the Mead Street Avenger for a few days. Lawyers from the Wilcox Steel Mill are arriving tomorrow. I'll need to focus on that and not worry about some guy who used to live in a Scully Square flophouse. Will Lars attend the meeting? I doubt it. My guess is that he and your father will now begin excavating and exploring Boston's seedy west side, trying to find the elusive and mysterious Giles Duxbury. I have a strange feeling that things might get very interesting. For my dad's sake, I hope they do. For my sake, I hope they don't.